Welcome to Unit 10 Personality. Today we're going to be going over Module 57 Trait Theories. So there are quite a few learning targets, but it isn't that long of a module today. And if you're just joining this channel, these um, AP Psychology recordings uh, align with Meyer Psychology for the AP Course 3rd Edition. So the learning targets are to explain how psychologists use traits to describe personality, discuss some common misunderstandings about the um, trait of introversion, describe personality inventories and discuss their strengths and weaknesses as trait assessment tools, and identify the traits that seem to provide the most useful information about personality variation. And finally, discuss whether research supports the consistency of personality traits over time and across different situations. So what is the term, what does the term trait mean? Well, a trait is a characteristic pattern of behavior or a disposition to feel and act in certain ways. Um, it's often assessed by self-report inventories um, or peer reports. So if you think about yourself, are you logical, emotional, solid, unreliable, <laughs> hilarious maybe, um, moody? What are the tra traits that you would use to describe yourself? So trait psychologists, trait theorists, such as Gordon Alport, Isabel Briggs Myers, and her mother, Catherine Briggs, were con concerned less with explaining the individual traits than they were with describing them. There are tests designed to sort people into personality types, such as the very um, famous Myers-Briggs type indicator, which is often called the MBTI, you may have heard of it, and it's often used in business and career counseling. But some, some of them have outlived their actual validity. So what are the limitations of relying on traits to classify individuals? Classifying people as one or another distinct personality type fails to capture their full individuality. And because we are all in, you know, unique individuals with a complex mix of multiple traits. Instead, by placing people on several straight trait dimensions simultaneously, psychologists can describe countless individual personality variations. So what are two possible dimensions on which to place people? Well, two other famous theorists, uh, Hans Eysenck and Sybil Eysenck, believe that, we can believe that we could reduce many of our normal individual variations into two dimensions the extroversion introversion dimension and the emotional stability versus instability dimension. So how has the iSync's idea been tested? So people in 35 countries around the world from China to Uganda to Russian to Russia have taken what is called the iSync personality questionnaire. When their answers were analyzed, the extroversion and emotional factors inevitably emerged as basic personality dimensions across cultures. So when we hear the term introversion, a lot of us um, think of it as shyness, but introversion is not shyness. Shy people remain quiet because they fear others will evaluate them negatively. Introverted people, on the other hand, just seek low levels of stimulation from their environment <laughs> low levels of stimulation from their environment because they're sort of sensitive. So when, so for example, when given lemon juice, introverted people actually salivate more than extroverted people. Okay, and, and a really good example for, uh, for example, is an introverted person may attend a party along with an extroverted person and they both have a great time. But when the party's over, the introvert goes home and puts their feet up. The extrovert wants to keep the party going. As someone who is, all, you know, more towards the introverted side of the spectrum. I can totally tell you this is true. I am not shy and I can be social and I enjoy socializing sometimes, but it definitely drains me of energy a bit and I need to recharge afterwards as compared to my more extroverted friends and family. So how about what makes an extrovert? Just because someone is successful, fun, or talks a lot around others, don't assume they're extroverted. They may be an introvert that is using all of their energy towards that event. Later, they'll want to reduce that simulation. So one of the things that's interesting is in Western cultures, there seems to be a tendency to prize extroversion. Um, and Susan Cain, psycho the psychologist Susan Cain, wrote, wrote a really good book on this um, that is related to this topic called Quiet. I highly recommend it. Um, so if you look at like superheroes in movies and stuff, they tend to be extroverted. Um, 
you know, <laughs> whether it's Superman or Elastigirl, they tend to um, be more extroverted type individuals. 87% of Westerners say they want to be more extroverted. So being introverted seems to imply that we don't have the right stuff. Um, and attractive, successful people are presumed to be extroverts. And we often get these things, we often get these things wrong. So what is a personality inventory? Well, it's an objective questionnaire. Oftentimes they're true or false or agree, disagree types items on which people respond to items designed to gauge a wide range of feelings and behavior. They're used to assess traits, uh, selected personality traits. One of the most famous one is the MMPI, which stands for Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. The MMPI is probably the most widely researched and clinically used of all objective personality tests. Um, I took it, I remember taking it in my first uh, semester of graduate school. The MMPI was originally developed to identify emotional disorders, which is still considered the most appropriate use for it. But it's also used in employment situations to assess personality characteristics. It was designed by um, taking over 500 empirically derived self-report true and false questions such as nothing in the newspaper interests me except the comics. <laughs> that would be a type of question. Answers were then compared to answers given by people diagnosed with different disorders like depression, schizophrenia, or antisocial personality, and among others. The more similar the respondents' answers are to those clinically diagnosed, the more indication exists that the person may be suffering a disorder. So what do we mean by an empirically derived test? So the MMPI was created by selecting from a pool of items those that discriminate between groups. Personality inventories are scored objectively. However, we have to remember that just because it's scored objectively and we're looking at actual scores, you know, whether they're based on true and false or some sort of um, multiple choice option, objectivity doesn't actually guarantee validity, that it's measuring what it's purporting to measure. Those aren't the same thing. So while it's measured objectively, we have to still question the validity. So the researchers uh, for the MMPI grouped the questions into 10 clinical scales, including scales that assess depressive tendencies, masculinity, femininity, femininity, how rigidly sort of one conforms to gender stereotypes, and introversion, extroversion. Today, the MMPI 2 has additional scales that also assess work attitudes, family problems, and anger. So which traits provide useful information about personality variation? So today's trait researchers believe that simple trait factors, such as what the Isings came up with, the introversion, extroversion, and stability, instability dimensions are really important. Everyone thinks those are still important, but that they don't tell the entire story. A slightly expanded set of factors developed by Robert McRae and Paul Costa dubbed the big five does a better job according to significant amounts of research. So you may have heard of the big five, but what are the big five? Well, this is one of those times you can use a mnemonic. So picturing a canoe, well, or you can say canoe or ocean is, are the mnemonics you could use. Um, but here they have canoe. So we think about conscientiousness, agreeableness, neuroticism, openness, and extroversion. So in terms of conscientiousness, do you tend to be more disorganized, careless, impulsive, or organized, careful, and disciplined, okay? So we're thinking about these on a dimension. You're not either or, you fall somewhere on that continuum. Agreeableness, are you ruthless, suspicious, uncooperative, or are you soft-hearted, trusting, and helpful? Neuroticism, and sometimes we misunderstand what neuroticism means. And we're talking about emotional stability here. So are you calm, secure, self-satisfied, or are you more anxious, insecure, self-pitying? Openness, are you practical, prefers routines and conforming? Or are you imaginative, prefers variety, and are you independent? Extroversion, are you retiring, sober, reserved? Or are you very sociable, fun-loving, and affectionate? And again, we're not saying either or. We're thinking about a dimension, a continuum of where you kind of fall in those. And there's lots of fun um, big five tests you can take online and get your scores for free and immediately. So around the world, 56 nations and 20, 26 languages in one study, people described others in terms roughly consistent with this list, is how they came up with all these. So conscientiousness. Highly conscientious individuals tend to be highly organized with great attention to detail. They are also goal-oriented and driven to succeed. 
People high in agreeableness are cooperative, empathic, empathetic, and caring, and they enjoy helping and being part of a group. How about neuroticism? People high in neuroticism experience mood swings and are often irritable. They worry about many things and get upset and anxious easily. Openness. People high in openness are creative and adventurous. They enjoy trying new things and taking on new challenges. This is the one I always score the highest on. <laughs> extroversion. People high in extroversion are outgoing and gain energy from being with others. They like to meet new people, start conversations, and have a wide variety of friendships. Now I'm more to the introverted side on this one for sure. Okay, our personality traits consistent over time. In some ways, our personality seems pretty stable. Cheerful, friendly children tend to become cheerful, friendly adults, but it's also true that a fun-loving jokester can suddenly turn serious and respectable, respectful at a job interview. New situations and major life events can shift the personality traits we express. So the person situation controversy, what is that? Well, our behavior is influenced by the interaction of our inner disposition with our environment. So the question lingers, which is more important? Okay, our environment and our inner disposition. When we explore this person's situation controversy, we look for genuine personality traits that persist over time and across situations. Are some people dependably conscientious and others unreliable? Some cheerful and others dour? Some friendly and outgoing and others shy? If we are to consider friendliness a trait, friendly people must act friendly at different times and places. So do they? Well, let's look at this. Is personality stable? With age, personality traits become more stable as reflected in the stronger correlation of trait scores with follow-up scores seven years later. So do traits equal behaviors? Although our personality traits may be both stable and strong, the consistency of our specific behaviors from one situation to the next is another matter. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, cartoon. I'm going to France. I'm a different person in France. Is that true? Do you behave differently in one certain situation versus another? So when do environments limit or encourage expression of traits? An unfamiliar formal situation, perhaps as a guest in the home of a person from another culture, our traits might remain more hidden as we try to like attend to the different new social cues. In familiar informal situations like hanging out at home or hanging out with your friends, we feel less constrained usually and we allow our traits to emerge. Okay, so let's review. Trait theorists see personality as a stable and enduring pattern of behavior. They've been more interested in trying to describe our differences than necessarily explaining them. So we utilize factor analysis to identify clusters of behaviors that tend to occur together to develop what we call the understanding of these traits. Genetic predisp predispositions do seem to influence many personality traits. Western cultures tend to prize extroversion, but introverts have different equally important skills for our culture. Introversion does not mean shyness, and extroverts don't always outperform introverts as leaders or even in sales situations. Introverts often experience great achievement, and many introvert introverts prosper a lot. Okay. So personality inventories such as the MMPI are questionnaires on which people respond to items designed to gauge a wide range of feelings and behaviors. The test items are what's called empirically derived and the tests are objectively scored. People can try to fake their answers to create a good impression, but usually all these tests like the MMPI have what's called a lie scale to try to catch people who are potentially being dishonest. Um, objectivity does not guarantee validity of the test. That's important to remember. So the big five personality factors, conscientiousness, agreeableness, neuroticism, openness, and extroversion, the canoe or the ocean. They currently offer the clearest picture of personality. That's what I want you to remember from this for sure, is that when we're thinking about measuring personality, the big five is the way to go. There are lots of different tests out there. We can all find out what Hogwarts house we belong to on uh, social media. Um, I'm a Gryffindor, but um, uh, sometimes a Ravenclaw, I guess, but usually a Gryffindor. Um, but if we want a the most reliable and valid personality test, look for the big five. These factors are stable and appear to be found in all cultures. Many genes, um, each having small effects, uh, it combines to influence our traits. Inheritability generally runs about 40% for each dimension. 
So a person's average traits do seem to persist over time and are predictable over many different situation, situations, but traits cannot predict behavior in any particular situation. So just because someone is strongly introverted, you can't necessarily predict how they're gonna behave in a certain situation, okay? Even though the traits are stable, you know, behavior may be different in different situations. And that is it, we're done for today. Thank you for listening, take care.